of content I feel your smile drifting Like a country stream My little girl Precious and pure As I fall back Into softness and sleep You can rest me with simple love You possess me with simple love You probably know, it's 1971, I was visiting William Burroughs in London, and as I was leaving he said to me, Jan, your job is to short circuit control. And we said, how do we do that? And he said, that's what you've got to do. <laughs> it's like, oh great, I have to short circuit control, thanks William. The easy phrase is control needs, is addicted to control, and so there are there are corporations, there are politicians, there are dogmatic pseudo-religions, and all of them are addicted to control for its own sake. It's almost like control becomes an animated being of itself. Nobody actually controls control anymore. Control just continues to exist. And it's always run by fear. Fear is always the way it works. Fear of something different, fear of something other, fear of something that somebody else believes that you don't. And that fear is used to intimidate and to attack and to hurt people. So right there is, is the crux of the whole problem. How do you change it? First of all, you have to design yourself. You have to decide that you are prepared to sacrifice everything if necessary to be true to the self that you are. And I lost everything overnight with the British government in 1991, you know? Two houses, a record label, a book publisher, everything. Just overnight, nothing, you know? But it's worth it. I don't regret losing everything at all because there's no other way to live except to try and be true to what you feel in here. At the moment, my feeling is the only way to fight control is communities, small units of communities, people who agree with each other enough about how to live, that they support each other, they share their resources, they, they spread their ideas through events like this, or through writing, or through whatever medium they can find, and they set up small autonomous units that are dedicated to a different way of living where it's about sharing, and generosity, and loving, and compassion, and kindness, and all the things that are destroyed by, by capitalism and, and totalitarianism. You know, so that's where it really has to work, is in small units, setting examples, and saying you don't have to live in fear. You don't have to be afraid all the time. You know, yes, you may get bullied, you may get hurt, but you have to stand up for what you believe. And we're in a really difficult place. There's so much denial. You know, the planet is disintegrating around us. And we look at it like this. We, we talk about it quite often in, in when we, we travel, that if you look at an organism, even just an amoeba, right? A simple organism, if it gets damaged, injured, it will use whatever resources it has to heal itself. If it is shrinking because of lack of nutrition, it will put whatever nutrition it has into that place to stay alive. And the human species, which we prefer humane, the humane species is one organism. All of us are just one organism, and we're all like the little cells. And what's the best way for that organism to survive? That whenever anything is damaged, we use all of our resources to heal it. And if there's not enough nutrition, we share the nutrition we have to heal it. And if we only worked on that pattern, we would have no need for armies and fighting and dogma and, and alternative you know, political systems. We would just be keeping ourselves healthy as a species. Oh, power. Oh, power. 
something that's different, something that's other, something that you don't recognize, someone who believes something different, somebody who wears something different, somebody who has glasses, somebody who doesn't wear glasses, somebody who doesn't wear shoes, somebody who does, you know, anything. It doesn't matter what it is. As long as they can say, look at them, they're different. That's what's happening in the United States right now. You know, two years ago, nobody discussed who used a toilet, right? Nobody cared if trans people went in toilets. We were just in Tennessee a few weeks ago. Every single gas station where we went to, to get fill the tank in the car, we were on a, a journey looking around. Everyone had a handwritten sign on the women's toilets that said, real women only. Usually spelt wrong. Usually they weren't even spelt correctly. And you just think, really? They've reduced it to that? So that people are concerned with who's in the bathroom and not who's blowing each other up, who's stealing the money from everybody, who's destroying the planet, who's fracking oil. You know, they've reduced it to a toilet. It's kind of ridiculous when you think about it. But they've tricked people into thinking about that. You know, they'll say, oh, I don't want to go in a bathroom when there's a man who might look at my daughter. Nobody who's trans wants to look at a daughter. They want to sit down and be female. You know, it's ridiculous. There's never been a case ever of a trans person doing anything to anyone in a toilet. But that's the big issue. And then these fake Christians who aren't Christian at all. Now, we, we were lucky, we grew up we were a Sunday school teacher, we studied the Bible, and we didn't become traditional Christian, but the ideas of a Christ, real or not, we agree with, which is compassion and kindness and forgiveness and all those other qualities that are so special. Um, anyone who quotes the Old Testament is not Christian, because the Christ said it's wrong. God isn't angry. God doesn't want to hurt anybody. God doesn't punish anybody. God is love. That's it. Everything is just love. So they're not Christian, but they quote the Old Testament. And it really drives me mad. Like, how can they say they're Christian? And they've got hate. They, they live in hate and violence and prejudice and bigotry and hypocrisy. And then they claim they're Christian. You know, Christ threw the money changers out of the temple. You know, so there they are trying to make all this money, and it's the opposite of what he said. So even if there was a Christ, and maybe there was someone, they're not listening. You know, so we have to live. The only answer, if you look at every religion, and we've studied as many as we can, we've traveled the world, it all comes down to love. That's the only thing. It's so corny, but it's true. We are not seeking followers. We are seeking collaborators. Individual, Officially, the Temple of Psychic Youth, it began in 1981 as an experiment in communities and networking, and it ended in 1991 when we realized people were trying to make me into a guru. And that wasn't the idea at all. The idea was they looked after themselves. So we said, no, that's it, stop. You know, now we're nomads. We all go out and we travel the world and we learn and we bring back ideas. We're not meant to be, no one's in charge, you know. But recently, it's got so bad that it's making sense to people again. You know, the, the original writing we did said, you know, we've reached a crisis, you know, we're going to destroy ourselves. And it seemed like people had been listening and it was getting better. There were more rights being given to different minorities and so on. But now it's all collapsing in again into this really uh, totalitarian capitalism and, and sort of ignorance, a really deep ignorance and a fear of freedom. Why are they afraid of freedom? Why are they afraid of a different idea? Because they know what they've got has no strength. And that's our strength. They know that they have no strength and they're trying to bluff everybody like playing poker, you know? So Topi was, it started as just an idea. What would happen if instead of just having a fan club, we tried to give real information? You know, have you thought about the world this way? You know, have you thought about trying to do things this way? Have you looked at this kind of belief system, that? So, and 
and it just grew. That's what the people making the film have said to me. They said, it's probably the last and a very important example of a network with no internet. It was all done in the post and talking and traveling to each other and meeting, you know, an actual living organism, again. Um, and we spread out through the world. There were 10,000 people worldwide, which is incredible, which proves an idea can be strong, you know? And now all these young people, especially who are working around that film, are re-inspired. And you know, in Russia, the Psychic Bible's coming out next week in Russian. Isn't that amazing? We met some people three years ago in Moscow. They, they came three years ago and interviewed me and said, why isn't it in Russian? And we said, we don't know Russian. Why don't you do it? And they said, okay. And then just a few months ago, we got that. We finished translating it after three years. We hadn't heard anything. And now it's coming out in Russian. We need it everywhere. Spanish would be good too, because there's a lot of people who speak Spanish. But it's in French already. Georgian, yeah, of course. We've got to go everywhere. We've got to sort of give an alternative. And it makes sense to people. People wouldn't be translating it and reading it and, and sharing it unless they thought it made sense. And it's, it's always the same thing. We strip away all the bullshit and just say, this seems to work. No, what about doing that? And if it doesn't work for you, find a way that it works. It's just saying to people, take control of your own lives and be brave, be courageous, you know, don't be afraid. Sometimes I feel I'm scared to live. The television screen is the best start out in your sort of, what, 19, we left university to live as an artist and a thinker. And now we're 66, and that's still what we do. And it's not that complicated if you're not afraid. You know, you have to just sit and think, what's the worst that could happen? We die. Well, we're gonna die anyway. So let, 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 no, let's not be afraid of that. And then what is there? There's nothing else. What are they gonna do? They tried taking everything I had, it didn't work. We just moved to America and carried on. You have to keep going, you have to, yeah. It, the history is, is littered with the examples of people who just refuse to surrender. And that's the only way. You can't start to compromise or it, it gives the, the enemy a chance to, to say that the ideas you have aren't really strong. Once you start, uh, we had a friend, we did an interview on English television once in 76 and it was for live TV. And they were trying to say how we were really evil and so on. And my friend who worked for the news said, if they say to you, what do you mean by that? If you say something, repeat it exactly the same. Because if you change it, it sounds like you don't know exactly what you wanted to say. But if you say it exactly the same, they look stupid. So that's a really, a really important trick. Always repeat exactly the same thing in an argument. Don't change it. Obviously, we've used a lot of different drugs in our life. Um, psychedelics, mainly. Uh, <laughs> And they've been very useful. I mean, at the moment, I don't bother with anything, but you know, we've had phases. Myself and Lady J, we got really interested in ketamine through John Lilly, who did dolphin intelligence and so on. Friends of his became friends of ours, and so we experimented with that for quite a while. And that was where Pandrogeny came from. Interest from ketamine, yeah. To me, that was a very useful experiment, you know. And, and it's interesting, John Lilly started cross-dressing when he used ketamine, and so did um, Timothy Wiley, who worked with him, who introduced us, he became cross-dressing too. And they all started to become kind of male-female. So there's a spirit in certain drugs, like a, a, an angel or a demon, depending on the drug, but there's a spirit in each drug. And it seems ketamine has the pandrogenous spirit that says, in the end, we've got to be unified. It's about unity, you know. 
my favorite drug was, well, it was ketamine with Jay, definitely. But without her there, it's kind of not interesting, so. Now it's just staying alive, long enough to keep talking. I'm looking for